In this video, guys, I want to talk about when to use higher octane gas on a regular octane engine. So let me talk about the general rule. The general rule is that it is a waste of money to use higher octane gas on an engine that was originally designed for regular unleaded. So for example, you know, this Honda K-Series engine 2.4 liter was designed for 80, 87 octane. So if I use a higher grade, 89 or 91 or 93 octane, it's essentially a waste of money. And I, I generally believe in the general rule. In other words, if you have an engine where the vehicle manufacturer specifies 87 octane, use 87 octane, okay? Now, where you may want to deviate from the general rule is where you have a car like this one that, you know, this Honda element is borderline underpowered. In other words, you know, the vehicle weighs about 3,500 pounds. The engine puts out about 155 horsepower. So if you have some friends in the car and you're heading uphill onto a freeway with the air conditioning on, on a hot day, and a truck is bearing down on you, you're in trouble. You are in very real trouble because this car does not have very good power overall. It's kind of underpowered. In that situation, boy, you better turn that air conditioning off. You better really rev up the engine, you know, 4,000, 4,500 RPMs, and see if you can't get out in front of that truck because... <laughs> because it's, uh, it's a little bit hairy. Um, so if you have a situation where your engine is borderlined a little bit underpowered and, and the engine is, has a lot of miles on it. So this has 185,000 miles on it, runs great. You know, I, I have no complaints. It's really in good shape, um, but there are, there, there are carbon deposits in the combustion chamber. So, you know, when I took, when I did a, um, a spark plug change this last time, you know, I took, I took off this plastic cover here. You take off these bolts here, take off the plastic cover that allows you to get to the spark plugs. Okay. And when I removed the spark plugs in order to change them, what I noticed was is that, you know, the cylinder, the top of the, the piston had carbon on it. And that's kind of normal for a car with, you know, 185,000 miles. But my point is, is that if you've got carbon, and I think probably all engines that have 185,000 miles on them have carbon. <laughs> what happens is, is that the actual compression level goes up a little bit on your engine. So this is an engine that has a 9.7 to 1 compression ratio, and it's probably gone up a little bit, okay? It's probably, you know, closer to 10. So what I've done, and just as a test, is, you know, a few weeks ago, I decided to go ahead and fill it up with 87 octane. And I, I only use really good gas, you know, Chevron, Shell, Texaco, da, 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 da. I filled it up three quarters of the tank, okay, with the 87 octane. And then I filled it up the rest of the way, so a quarter of a tank, with 93 octane, you know, the Primo. And then I just started driving it to notice if I could feel any difference. And I actually did feel a difference. The engine seemed a little bit smoother, and I, I had a sense that it had more power. In other words, when I would accelerate quickly in the car, um, even on the hot day with the air conditioner, air conditioner running, et cetera, et cetera, it seemed to respond better. Now, I'm the first to admit, you know, if, some, if one of you guys says, Tom, it's just the placebo effect, it's just in your mind, I'm totally willing to entertain that. But the research I've done online tends to show that if you have an older engine like this with a lot of miles on it, um, if, you, if you bump it up just a little bit to like an 89 octane instead of an 87 octane, you will see a little bit of a performance improvement. Now, that isn't true if you go up to 93. You will see no improvement from, 93, from 89 up to 93, okay? But just a little bit of a bump in octane will give you a little bit of a performance boost. Now, I am not here to scientifically prove that to you guys, I can't. I'm just saying that if you have a combination of, an, of a kind of an underpowered car and an older engine um, like this one, you may wanna try the equivalent of like an 89 octane and see if you don't have a performance difference. 
So this is just something to try. Again, the general rule is the general rule, okay? I generally believe that, you know, if you've got an 87 octane designed engine, use 87 octane, okay? Otherwise you're just throwing your money away. But in this situation, I have noticed a little bit different, a little bit of a difference. And so I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep using kind of an 89 octane blend in this engine. Anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to share for today. I appreciate you guys a lot and I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you in the next video. Take care.